A reading from the Franciscan Book of Saints. April 29th, Venerable Paul Heath, Martyr, First Order. The son of a Protestant family, Henry Heath was born at Peterborough, Northamptonshire, England, in 1599. Endowed with unusual gifts of the mind, he was sent at 18 to the University of Cambridge, and four years later he received the degree of Bachelor of Arts and was placed in charge of the university library. Because of religious misgivings, which became graver as he advanced in his studies, Henry began to investigate the teaching of the Catholic Church. He soon saw how utterly untenable Protestantism was on logical and historical grounds and decided to embrace the old faith. Leaving Cambridge secretly, he went to a Catholic nobleman in London, but at first he was taken for a spy. After seeking the aid of the Blessed Virgin, however, he was well received and introduced to a priest who admitted him into the church. The young convert then left England and went to the English college at Dowie. Meeting the sons of St. Francis at Dowie, he was filled with the desire of joining their ranks, but was discouraged by his confessor. Once more he implored the help of the Blessed Virgin, and in May 1624 he was clothed with the Franciscan habit and received the name of Friar Paul of St. Magdalene. Four years later he was ordained a priest. Father Paul was highly esteemed for his virtue as well as his learning. He held the important offices of Professor of Moral and later Dogmatic Theology, Spiritual Director of the Student Clerics, Vicar and then Guardian. At the same time he devoted himself to the care of souls, making sinners and heretics the special object of his priestly zeal. Many conversions were brought about through the prayers and labours of Father Paul. Father Peter Marchant, who presided at the chapter of 1637, described Father Paul as a mirror of meekness, integrity and sincerity, a beacon light of holiness, a model of religious observance among the brethren, and in the science of theology a shining and glowing star among the luminaries of the Dawi University. From the beginning of his conversion, Father Paul distinguished himself by his devotion to Our Lady. Though his father had remained a bitter Protestant, Father Paul begged the Blessed Mother to lead him into the fold of the Church, and a most remarkable conversion followed. The 80-year-old man crossed the sea to hunt up his son at Dawi, and not only did he make his peace with the old faith, but he joined the Franciscans there as a lay brother. In 1641, the Puritan persecution of the Catholics in England broke out. It was directed particularly against priests. Five Franciscans won the martyr's crown, and Father Paul was the third among these. In December 1642, he left Dowie for Dunkirk. There he had a sailor suit made out of his habit and crossed the channel to Dover. On the way to London, he was apprehended. After admitting that he was a priest and making a fearless profession of faith, he was thrown into Newgate Prison. There he devoted much time to the spiritual comfort of his fellow prisoners and of the many Catholics who came to visit him. More than 500 went to confession to him. Several months he spent in prison, and in April he was condemned to be executed at Tyburn. When the final preparations were made for his hanging, Father Paul again and again invoked the names of Jesus and Mary. His last words were, O Jesus, forgive me my sins. Jesus, convert England. Jesus, have mercy on this country. O England, be converted to the Lord thy God. He died a martyr's death on April 27, 1643. At the moment of his death, the aged lay brother at Dawi, who was his father, saw a brilliant light ascending into heaven and told his brethren that his son had just then died for the faith. A Reflection on True Spiritual Progress You are the nearer to God, the lower you become in your own estimation, and the farther removed from the world. Be humble yet trustful, be patient yet energetic, be insistent yet resigned, always singling out for yourself the last place among God's servants. Whatever good you have the chance to do, take it as something entrusted to you by God. In such a case, busy yourself, hand and foot, to achieve the aim, bending your unwilling mind to the task, 
and embracing the cross of Christ with all your heart. And when you have finished the work, do not sit back to indulge vanity and dissipation, but with due allowance for rest, direct your interior gaze upward and seek out a solitary place to find your way to Jesus. At such times, set your mind on contrition and regret for the days of your sojourn. Be ready for hardships, be vigorous in mortifying yourself, be cheerful about prayer, for such things and all things are to lead you to one destination, to God. The temptation to sin will now and then attack you. Then you must be ready to defend steadfastly the camp of your heart, so that the enemy's power cannot take food there. Make Christ alone your really intimate friend, for he alone can give you the victory in all cases. When the devil assails you, Christ supplies the arms against him. He will rouse your sleeping conscience with his secret impulse, so that you may not stray from the right path under the black darkness of temptation. He will show the way for your resolutions, infuse fervour, steady your virtue, and lead your advance to the goal. He understands the wise, and he instructs the ignorant as well, those who have never tasted the rudiments of human wisdom. In Christ's company you will find yourself reaching out to greater progress in a month than you can over long periods of time by cultivating the world's vain companionship. Once you have begun well, do not for anybody's sake desist from your good proposals. If no chance to practice virtue presents itself, still you can go on practicing it interiorly, at one time hanging your head as if you heard Jesus sweetly reproving you, at another bending your back to the rod of mortification, as if you felt Jesus lovingly beating you, at still another, having recourse to the incentives of virtue, or the aspirations of love, or the sigh of repentance. But let people not see your private austerities, so that you can keep them secretly for God alone. Go your humble way, therefore, as the vilest among sinners, regardless of how far you may have advanced in holiness and virtue. For the farther you advance, the more you will be assaulted by enemies. Wherefore, so much the more do you need the grace and mercy of God. Never consider yourself safe, never regard yourself as truly perfect, for you do not know how readily you will fall when temptation assails you. Let Jesus, therefore, be all your strength and confidence. Take your stand firmly with him, and do not depart from him. Pray when you should, so that your prayer may not interfere with your virtuous activity, nor the latter smother, but rather promote your life of prayer. In that way seek nothing, either in your prayer or in your activity, but the plain will of God. These beautiful reflections on true spiritual progress are culled from the writings of Venerable Paul Heath. If we make them our own, they will lead us onward as they did the saintly martyr. Prayer of the Church O God, who dost chiefly manifest thy almighty power in long-suffering and pity, increase thy mercy towards us, that hastening after thy promises we may be made partakers of the heavenly treasures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.